The heat from the sun creates our climate and weather and keeps us alive. But the sun is hardly a space heater. It's a massive, efficient energy machine. It gives off over a trillion, yes, a trillion megawatts and has a surface temperature of over 3,000 degrees. Arizona summers don't get quite that hot, but we all know how brutal they can be. And they're just getting hotter. Hi, welcome to Copper Point Mutual's Focus on Safety. I'm your host, Greg Fernandez. In this series, we bring you some information that can help make sure you go home from work safe every day. On this episode, we focus on a very dangerous situation called heat stress. We're gonna talk about what causes heat stress, how to treat it, and most importantly, how to prevent it. Like the sun, our bodies are efficient energy machines. They usually work fine on their own to keep our body temperature stable by getting rid of excess heat. But when the temperature outside of our bodies is so hot or humid they can't get rid of that excess heat, we could be in serious trouble. And daytime summer temperatures in Arizona reach way above our normal body temperature of 98.6 degrees. Sweating cools us off, but it's not always enough. The more you sweat, the more liquid you lose. The more liquid you lose, the less you can sweat. Perspiration also has minerals like salt and potassium that our bodies need to function. Dehydration and mineral loss can make you seriously ill. And if you get hot enough, you can literally be cooked. That might sound funny, but it's really not. The most serious heat illness called heat stroke is an emergency. If you don't get immediate care from trained professionals, you'll die or end up with permanent brain damage. Symptoms of heat stroke are hot, dry, or mottled skin, delirium or confusion, convulsions, high temperature of 105 or more, unconsciousness. To help someone with heat stroke until the pros arrive, move them to a cool area. Loosen any heavy clothes they're wearing. Try to get their temperature down with cool water. Dunk them, spray them, or wipe them down with wet cloths. Also, you can massage your hands and feet to get the cooler blood there circulating through the rest of the body. Heat exhaustion is one step below heat stroke, but it's still extremely serious. If left untreated, heat exhaustion can turn into heat stroke. Once again, if you see someone beginning to show symptoms of heat exhaustion, move them to a cool area and loosen or remove any heavy clothes they're wearing. Spray them or wipe them down with a wet cloth. And unless they're nauseous, give them water to drink, one cup every 15 minutes. Those symptoms are clammy, moist, pale or flushed skin, fatigue, nausea, dizziness, vomiting, fainting. Other heat illnesses are painful heat cramps, heat rash, fainting, and heat fatigue. These might not sound so bad, but what if you were driving a forklift and got dizzy and fainted, or got a leg cramp on a rooftop and fell? One possible result of any heat illness? Accidents. Heat stress doesn't give you any warning either. The symptoms can come on like that, causing you to have an accident that seriously injures you or can cost you your life. And heat stress doesn't go away once you've had it. You're susceptible for years afterward. And your eyes? They don't have any way to get rid of the heat. So heat damage can also seriously affect your sight. Now, let's talk about conditions at work that you can watch out for so you don't get sick or hurt by an accident caused because your body got overheated. If you work in direct sun or heat, you have the highest risk for heat stress, especially if you go for a long time without taking breaks or drinking fluids. You already know your body heats up when you work hard, which is why you sweat. Remember, if you add enough extra heat from outside of your body, sweating may not be enough to cool you off. We're talking with Dr. Jim Fleming here. He's the medical director of the Health Center for the Phoenix Fire Department. Now, living here in Phoenix, uh, with our daytime summer temperatures so hot, you must see so many different types of heat stress. Well, yeah, there's uh, heat stress is really a continuum uh, that goes anywhere from you know, just being mildly exhausted all the way up to heat stroke. Uh, fortunately, we do not see much of heat stroke, but you know, the people can get exhausted fairly easily uh, and can also go into where they start having uh, damage to the muscles and the kidneys start shutting down. Uh, and heat stroke is a deadly emergency uh, that needs to be taken care of immediately. 
uh, and you want to take care of it while it's still in the exhaustive stage. Now, if you enter into heat exhaustion, what are some of the symptoms of heat exhaustion and then leading into heat stroke that we might need to be aware of? The early uh, symptoms that you get and the reason it's called exhaustion is you feel tired, uh, you get headache, uh, light, some dizziness is very common with that, dry mouth, profuse sweating. Uh, those are probably the most common symptoms that folks get. You can also get nauseated uh, with that. Uh, and you can start becoming more and more delirious you know, as time goes on. So you may not really even know that these things are happening to you? Is You're, you may very something? well have some alteration of your mental status, absolutely. You don't have to be outside to be near direct heat. OSHA says that any process or job site that might raise your inner temperature higher than 100.4 degrees raises your risk of heat stress. Commercial kitchens or bakeries, boiler rooms, chemical plants, and laundries are all examples of places where heat stress can happen. If you work in a warehouse with closed bay doors and no air conditioning, you might find yourself in real trouble. It's not just being outside or near heat that can make you sick. It's what you wear, how you work, how long you work, what you eat and drink, and how much air is circulating around you. Other factors can affect your risk too, not being used to the heat, being on medication, your age and your fitness level are all things you and your employer should talk about to help keep you safe on the job. Everyone's heard they should drink enough fluids, but if you wait until you actually feel thirsty, you could already be in trouble. OSHA says you should drink one cup of fluids every 15 minutes. Adding some ice to keep it cool is even better. But watch out for caffeinated drinks or alcohol, which can make you more dehydrated. You do need water. But adding fluids like Gatorade can help replace the minerals you lose when you sweat. Mineral loss causes heat cramps and can seriously affect important body organs like your brain, heart, and kidney. Eating a heavy meal before you work in the heat can make you sleepy. So eat light. Fruits and vegetables have lots of water in them, and they're high in vitamins and minerals you might lose through perspiring. You do need to take breaks and take them away from the heat. Come in out of the sun, find some shade, or just get away from the source of the heat for a while. Wear clothes that are both lightweight and light in color. You can also wet your clothes down, or if you wear a helmet or hard hat, try wetting down a bandana and wearing it underneath. If you work out in the sun, make sure that you protect your skin by using sunscreen. And don't forget one of your most valuable assets, your eyes. All right, joining me now is Bill Cooper. He's the Safety Compliance Supervisor here at ADOSH. And Bill, I'd like to ask you a few questions related to uh, heat stress. Obviously, living here in Arizona and working in Arizona, especially in the summertime, uh, ADOSH must be concerned about heat-related illnesses for workers. Why are they so concerned? Well, simply put, uh, heat stroke can be fatal. Uh, because we live in Arizona in the Southwest, uh, heat exhaustion and heat stress can lead up to a heat stroke, and that's a life-threatening condition. Uh, in Arizona, we have serious issues dealing with the summer temp with the temperatures during the summertime. Uh, construction workers, utility workers, landscapers, all these employees are exposed to these conditions on a daily basis. What do you recommend? What does ADOSH actually recommend for employees to help prevent heat-related heat illnesses? To drink plenty of fluids. Uh, don't wait until you get thirsty. If, if you wait until you're thirsty, it's almost too late. You want to try to drink a cup of water every 15 minutes. Take frequent breaks. In the summertime, you're, you're, the employer is going to have to be a little bit more lenient and allow that employee to take more breaks and to take longer breaks. And when you take a break, take a break in a shaded area or a cool area. Uh, where possible, try to work into the shade. Now you mentioned employers uh, providing extra breaks. What other recommendations do you have for employers to help ensure that their employees remain safe on the job? Uh, to develop policies and procedures and to gain knowledge so that they understand what the hazards are associated with heat illnesses. They need to develop those procedures to ensure that employees do take breaks, that they do take longer breaks, more frequent breaks in the summertime, and that they understand the hazards associated with heat illnesses. What type of symptoms would an employee look for if they feel like they might be uh, being hit with a heat-related illness? That can vary, but some of the symptoms may be skin rash, uh, nauseous, um, getting the chills. Uh, maybe your eyesight might be getting a little blurry or something. Um, you're not thinking 
the same way you would normally. You're taking chances where normally you wouldn't be taking chances. You're not pacing yourself. Okay. Well, it sounds like there are things that everybody can do to help prevent heat-related illnesses, and that goes for employees and employers alike. So we always recommend that you educate yourself and that employers take on the responsibility to educate the employees so that we can all remain safe in the workplace. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate Thank it very much. You. Thank you. If you're an employer, some ways you can keep your employees from getting heat stress are air ventilation or air conditioning and heat shields in the environment. You can schedule work hours for cooler times of the day and spread heavy jobs among several employees. Have employees work in pairs so each person on the team gets a break. You can also work employees in shifts. Provide cool areas where they can take heat breaks and be sure there's someone on your job site who knows the signs of heat stress and is watching out for it. A good idea is to give your workers time to get used to the heat. Employees who haven't worked much in the heat before may need more time than your more heat experienced employees. Of course, be sure to provide easy access to drinking water and other fluids. Our bodies, like the sun, are efficient machines, but when they get too hot, they can break down. Here's a review of the symptoms and treatment options for heat stress, along with some prevention techniques. If you start to feel symptoms of heat stress, talk to your supervisor right away. Or, if you're the supervisor, watch out for employees showing signs of heat stress. Remember, your life is important, and maybe you have someone at home who thinks so too. So stay cool and stay safe. I'm Greg Fernandez. Thanks for watching. Focus on safety. For printed safety materials, go to copperpoint.com.